Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give your... I know most of you have an idea of how your wife should look like, how your husband. He must be five foot eight, with a broad chest. Maybe he has lifted weight sometimes, and the biceps are out, the, the triceps are out. Macho man. That's the, that's, that's the portrait of the kind of person the devil used to hinder you. That thing you are seeing is a portrait. <laughs> but when you go to the place that God wants you to go, don't pray too much. Don't pray too much. If where you are, it's not where if God didn't lead you there. Just accept it. I missed it. But you say, I shouldn't leave. There'll be grace enough since your heart is sincere. But you are praying a counter prayer. You went into a wrong place and you are asking God, hey, heal the marriage. I will not join you. No. I won't join you. Mm. I, I know what I'm saying is, is offensive. For the rest of my life, that's how I've decided to, to be now. Let me be telling you the truth because me, I don't live a lie, so I, I shouldn't tell you something else. I didn't lead myself to where I am. You understand? I didn't lead myself. No. God led me there. So when you are sending coffin to take my wife, it's not our plan. We stumbled on, on the will of God and we accepted it. We had other plans. If you interview my wife very well, you will, there were plans. Hallelujah. And if you interview me too, I will tell you there were plans. If you interview, but I don't know. <laughs> but where we are today is not the flesh that brought us there. So it's not our business. We don't we don't pray for God to help keep us. No, He sent us there. Somehow anything can happen, but those marriages can break. Anything can happen because the integrity of God is at stake. That's how we live by faith. You figure your life within the context of the will of God. You will, you, will be, you, you will pray only about what God wants you to do. Not a problem. Trying to patch this. Trying to patch that. Because you are out of place. Every time you begin to pray. I want to connect with God. Everything around your life that is not the will of God will begin to crack. Have you, have you found out? And let it not be that it will be your marriage that will be cracking. Just because you enter the place that God didn't leave you. Most people want to live with the agenda and they want God's help. No, the people God is raising are not people that have created their, their world. People that have allowed the Holy Spirit to garnish it. Friends, don't be in a hurry. Go where God is leading you. Somebody say, okay, just think, what if we have already missed it? I will show you the way. Mm, show you the way. But we'll first agree that you have missed it. Huh? Friends, if you are not yet married, settle down. Mm, cool down. Don't be in a hurry. Cool down. Let God speak to you. Eh? Your own. Let it not be a proverb you will hear and you will marry. Let Baba open your eyes and speak to you. God spoke to us. That's why we are here. And we can't pass anything to you that is different from what we have. Philip told me, he said, me in my house, I'm resting. That's the plan of God for any man of his. That will wait to enter into his inheritance. Do you want to fulfill the will of God or you want to stay in error till you die? I want to know how desperate you are to do what God wants first because you are still holding to your will and you still want God to. Do you understand? Can you be as radical as to say, God, I went into this marriage, it was, I went, I, it was not you, I went in and there's a problem. If you want this marriage to go for me to fulfill your will, I'm ready for it if that's what you if, if that's it. Have you ever prayed like that before? I know you have not prayed like that. Because we are being designed to live outside of God's will and be comfortable. The radar is reading red. Da, 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 da. Reading red. And I need to tell us that. You don't live loose like that. Create your, invent your life and you want God to support it. That's where the average Christian is. And you don't know the risk. You don't know what will happen to you in the next 25 years. You're going to have heart trouble, all kinds of trouble because you are not where you are supposed to be. 
I came, I stumbled upon a mighty discovery. That the devil could, did not have the ability to say, I'll kill you by nine o'clock and have it done. If you are where God wants you to be, it means that you are forsaking your own agenda to be there. Hallelujah. You don't need to pray for protection. It is not at your own expense that you will survive there. You will survive there at the expense of the one that put you there. It's not given to the devil to say, I'll kill you by man. It's not given. Has it not made many attempts on your life? Did he succeed? Uh, no. It's not given to him. It's not as strong as you think, but the problem of lack of power among the children of God is a problem of rebellion. They are not aligned with God. When you stand in the will of God and you pray, the price that Jesus paid in procuring your salvation, the only reasonable way to reciprocate his love is that you offer yourself. Any other thing you do is not reasonable. And the Bible reveals that when God appeared to Abraham in Sikha, that he read up an altar to God. That's an altar of consecration. That's what we call a burnt offering. Your will, your strategy, your wisdom, your plans burn off on that altar. My friend, if you have not yet come to that point where your strategies and your will has burnt off, your prayer doesn't have power. Ah, somebody say, give me a scriptural backing. You must understand that prayer is a kingdom function. And prayer is only prayer and only powerful when it's within the context of the will of God. You are not with me now. Now, several people pray for stuff 